Hello, my friends, Jerry Rosa here with a not so live shop talk. <laughs> we tried to do a live shop talk Friday and it just turned out to be a total disaster. I actually started work on that shop talk at 7 a.m. Friday morning and uh, it was like 11 30, 12 ish by the time we thought we could go live worked on it solid and it just totally flopped. So I finally pulled that one and deleted it off of YouTube. So you'll just have to bear with me here. We'll do the best we can with a not so live shop talk. Yes, we have internet problems and they are not going to get fixed anytime soon. I don't think we're going to get our internet fixed until we can get Starlink. I mean, I think that's it. They have changed something on our local cell towers that has throttled us down. Probably, they probably saw all my activity that I'm doing out here. See, we're in a very rural area and the activity on that cell tower probably, you know, pointed directly to me or at least to that cell tower specifically. And uh, they've done something to throttle it. I'm, I'm sure that's what it is because we had 4G antenna service for a couple of years and it was very, very, very good service. We were getting at least 20 megabytes down and anywhere from six to 10 up, which is for a rural area is just awesome. Had no complaints whatsoever. And then all of a sudden it didn't work anymore. So, and I worked with 4G for a long time and they couldn't do anything about it. So I switched to Nomad, which cost me an additional $40 a month, which I was already paying around 80. So I'm actually paying right at 130 now. Um, Anyway, make a long story short, uh, the Nomad service is no better and their customer support is even 10 times worse. So I am just not happy with Nomad at all. I would not recommend them to anyone based on their customer service more than anything. But uh, I am sure it's a cell tower issue. The reason I say that is because even when we had problems with the internet, we could always go to our cell phone and just use the cell phone as the hot spot and make that work that doesn't work anymore either. That's why the uh, shop talk flopped on Friday because we were trying to use a cell phone and that didn't work either. So they've actually done something to the cell tower out here to, you know, throttle us way down or something. Well, all right, enough said about that. But if you do uh, have any inside information, and when I say inside information, I mean, you know, information that uh, you've heard you know, from a good source that, uh, you know, here's a way that you can get in, you know, early on Starlink, let me know because here in uh, South Central Missouri, uh, Starlink seems to be a little ways away from us at the moment. Um, I heard several times now on the internet that Starlink is supposed to be really rolling it out this year and early this year. In fact, I heard in the February timeframe that it would be opened up to us. So that's what I'm doing is I'm basically holding my breath for Starlink. So if you have any inside information or any tips that I can use to uh, get it quicker, let me know. Okay, enough, enough on the internet problem. You know, I wanted to cover all the different gifts that people have sent me during this time where we've had so much internet trouble and I haven't been doing the live shop talks. So I wanted to cover those and try to uh, get those out of the way and, and say thank you to those folks. And then I, that way I can start using these things. I don't typically use any gift like that until I say thank you. So here we go, let's take a look. And the very first thing I want to talk about is my Academy Award. I have won an Academy Award. Can you believe it? This is not plastic, ladies and gentlemen. This is a real Academy Award. Well, it's real metal anyway. Um, I'd say it's cast bronze or brass or whatever. It's, it, it came with a, a, you know, a document. It says, uh, the fake Academy wishes to extend to you this fake Oscar for best in chocolate. <laughs> 
So if you don't know what I'm talking about there about chocolate, uh, go into YouTube on the search and just type in RSW chocolate and you'll find it. It's a series, I think four or five parts on restoring an old violin that was completely crushed. And I think you'll enjoy that series. Uh, there's a lot more to it than just what it sounds like. There's a lot of behind the scenes uh, stories and, and history about the violin and uh, about the girl that owned it. So this came from John Hansen up in Lav uh, Lavania, Michigan. I, that's how I'm gonna say it. I don't know if I'm pronouncing Lavania right. But uh, John, thank you very kindly. I appreciate it. Uh, it's, it was a lot of fun to receive this. This will be on a shelf here prominently around my desk. So thank you very much. I wanted to say thank you to Michael Pohl, who sent us uh, four uh, gospel CDs. I haven't even opened mine yet. As I told you, Michael, I, I always like to uh, say thank you before I look at a gift like this. And I appreciate it very much, Michael. I will definitely give this a good listen. Uh, I gave one to um, Melissa and to... Uh, Caleb, and also to Ron, who makes the Deer Antler Saddles for us. So and I know they all enjoy gospel music. So thank you very much. I appreciate it very much, Michael. Next, I want to say thank you to Herschel Rector for giving me uh, another uh, blue chip pick. Um, actually, <laughs> it got stuck up in here in the uh, in the cardboard but I still I haven't opened it yet it's in the cardboard area here but uh, it also came with a holder and that's really cool so Herschel Rector from uh, Mississippi thank you very kindly I love blue chip picks and it's got my name on it and everything too so I'm gonna be real happy to use that here and uh, I just wanted to say thank you we have a uh, unusual uh, I guess gift here from um, this fellow Brad Adkins, it looks like, in Portland, Oregon. And here's the, it says silence please. Now, you can take that a couple of different ways. <laughs> so Brad, I, I hope it's the good way that you want me to maybe hang this on our door when we're doing live broadcasts or something. I, I, I'm assuming that's what it's for. Otherwise, you're just telling me to shut up. So I'm not really sure. <laughs> which it is. But but Brad, thank you very much. We will use the sign on our door out there. I am positive. The next one is from uh, John C. And John sent us a real nice iron here. I had seen these on uh, Amazon and thought about getting one of these. This is one of these uh, sealing irons that people use. I know they use them on planes and all kinds of things for sealing the fabric uh, over the wings and things like that. Um, it's heat adjustable, you know, and you've seen many times I made my own heating iron uh, very similar to this. Uh, I made it in the size and shape that kind of fits the bridge. This one might be a little awkward for a bridge, to be perfectly honest with you, but it would should work really good on um, uh, on fretboards and things. And so we may use this. And his comment says, sometimes simple is better. Well, I always agree with that. Uh, you've heard me say that probably at least a thousand times in my videos. I always like to do the easy thing or the simple thing first. And uh, so I appreciate this very much, John. We will put it to good use. Um, you know, and be, the fact that there's two of us here in the shop and sometimes we're competing for the one iron. So this will give us another option there too. So thank you very kindly, I appreciate it. Okay, the next thing is uh, from R. Strickland up in Washington, Everett, Washington. And he sent me a bunch of information on basically eating right and, uh, you know, dietary things and, um, you know, a book. Um, and this is written by um, William Ellis, it looks like. Yeah. Uh, well, no, Robert Strickland is the uh, editor. So, so Robert uh, had something to do with it. But it was written, I think, written by William Ellis. And uh, Robert Strickland was the editor, it looks like. So, uh, Robert, uh, thank you very much. I appreciate this. I will get it out now and read that. I uh, have, like I said, I don't usually use anything until I say thank you. So thank you very kindly. I appreciate it very much. On the other side of that issue, I have all but given up. And, and I, don't mind, I don't want this to sound like I'm looking for sympathy. I'm not. I've all but given up on any extra trials or 
cures or anything for the arthritis. It has gone so far and so deep and so fast. The hands are pretty much shot, guys. You know, in the past, it was just my thumbs. Now it's my fingers. It's everything. I mean, according to the x-rays, it was all over my hands anyway, but I wasn't feeling the pain in my fingers until recently. And now it's just all over the whole hands. It's, it's not good and it's not getting any better. The back, the spine, the neck, I can barely turn my head anymore. I have to pretty much turn my whole body anymore. Um, it's just bad. And, uh, you know, I, the doctor said you're in late stage three. Well, I'm either stage three now or possibly stage four. I don't know. But, uh, you know, again, I'm not saying that for looking for sympathy. I'm not, you know, I can only, those of you who suffer from arthritis and severe arthritis like I have uh, will understand. It's just, it just doesn't get any better. And, you know, it's not a diet issue. It's not this or that. It's just you've got it, and it's just something you're going to have to learn to live with. Um, you know, I've always said I wasn't going to take those crazy medicines that they come out with now that cause stroke, uh, you know, heart attack, uh, you know, cancer, everything that you can imagine those things cause. And I won't take any of those kinds of drugs until. I'm totally disabled and if I'm disabled then I'll consider those things but at this point no I've already got arthritis I don't need those other problems <laughs> so anyway enough on that um, we got a microphone sent to us and I gotta be honest I can't remember the fellow's uh, name that sent this I'm sure it's hidden here in my uh, desk and I, I just want to say thank you for sending me this microphone. We haven't had a chance to really try it out yet. I am positive I've got the name and stuff here, but it's gotten buried in some papers. I just saw it laying here and I forgot to include it this morning. So um, I'll mention your name at a later date, but I do thank you for sending me that. Uh, we got some antler. This is uh, from Mike Baumhover, uh, B-A-U-M-H-O-V-E-R, and he's up in Iowa, and uh, Ames, Iowa, it looks like. And these are some big boys here. I mean, well, the, this one is, is good size, this one here. Um, it's not huge or anything, but this boy here, this is a big boy. <laughs> This is a big boy. When you grab a hold of this one, you know you got a hold of something. I mean, it, this was a very mature, big old white-tailed deer. And, uh, you know, great big, thick rack. So we'll be using those, I guarantee you. And uh, they'll live for a long time on musical instruments to come. So thank you very kindly there, Mike Baumover. I appreciate it very much. This one didn't actually have a name with it that I could find. The name on the return address says Gary Fisher Wahoo International, which I'm assuming is the company where this came from, uh, Vista, California. That's the only clue I have. But this is Solares um, uh, UV Cured Grain Sealer. And I've tried Solares product in terms of the finish and stuff, and I think it's a good product, but I'm, I'm a little afraid to try it on an instrument, to be perfectly honest with you, because I don't know what it's gonna do to the sound, and after you do all of that work, you sure as heck don't wanna mess up the sound. But I will be doing some experiments with this grain sealer to see if it uh, does a good job for me. I sure do appreciate whoever sent this to me. If it was Gary Fisher, well, thank you, Gary Fisher, but uh, I have a feeling it was someone else. But thank you very kindly. I really appreciate it. And last but not least, Daryl Blanchard uh, from Oklahoma, who came out and stayed at our rental retreat here, uh, sent me a block of this um, uh, lignum vitae. Uh, is lignum vitae? I, I don't know how to pronounce it. Uh, that's how I pronounce it, lignum vitae. The reason he sent me a block of this was for testing. I was looking for a wood that would turn green or be green for the uh, using it for my inlay work with my roses and things. And he says, if you put hydrogen peroxide on this, it turns green. And, you know, being colorblind, it's difficult for me to tell one change anyway. But if I was guessing, I'd say that wood looks a little on the green side already. So at least part of it does. So thank you very much, Daryl. We'll do some testing on that as well. That concludes all of the uh, gift ideas. Just moments ago, I don't know how it's gonna relate 
in time to this video, but just moments ago, I released another part of the 12 string build. I just thought I'd show you on camera here just where we're at on the 12 string. You can see I've got the holes drilled in the peg head. The, I've got a, a um, Paduk overlay on the peg head there. So the neck is pretty much shaped. It's in, it's in very good shape. Um, not completely finished, of course. I do have the truss rod in it, by the way. I'm going to put on a rosewood fingerboard and um, this, uh, this rosewood has had some test oil put down here on, and we'd have to put some more on it to make it match all the way, but you can see what it, it's gonna look darker as, it, as we uh, oil it up and everything. I have a piece of uh, rosewood here that I'm probably going to make the uh, pick guard out of. This stuff is so resonant, even the pick guard would, if, I don't know if this will, if you can hear it or not, but listen. Just amazing, the tone in even the pick guard, you know. So, um, and then here's the current state of what the back looks like at the moment. Got the back braces in it. Um, the back, you can hear the resonance in this too. Really, really resonant. And then here's a close up of what the uh, rosette looks like right now. And this is just like, this is like an African drum. I mean, this is incredible. It's amazing the sound that's coming out of that. So that's really gonna be a resonant body for a guitar there. So anyway, that's where we're at presently on the 12 string. I just thought I'd bring you up to date on that. I also have a video of me playing and singing a little tune on the uh, Carolina Rose guitar and we'll insert that right here. Well friends, the Carolina guitar has been sitting in the shop for a couple of weeks now. I just love this guitar. I think it's just a great guitar. I told Caleb a minute ago, if I kept this guitar, I'd probably start playing guitar instead of mandolin. I raised the saddle up to about, uh, oh, I don't know, it's got clearance of 60, 70, eh, probably 75 to 100 thousandths above the bridge. That raised the uh, action up here to uh, 90 on the on the bass E and 85 on the treble. So it's and that's been sitting that way for a couple of weeks now or a week and a half anyway. And uh, seems fine. Thought I'd play a little tune on it for you. See if I can get through this. This is a brand new tune for me. Uh, Gary's been singing this tune for years, but I just I just learned the words to it the other day. Billy was a fighting drinking man. friend. Mary Johnson was an angel, bless her heart. And we all cried when she fell for Billy Sparks. She found a man that no one knew was there. And all it took was two wings and a prayer. Mary Johnson is an angel, heaven knows. Sundays in a row and Seven Sundays in a row He's been in church And he's a little hard to recognize And his tie and starch white shirt And there's a battle raging in his troubled soul But God's won seven Sundays in a row Sometimes we all stumble and we fall There's a little Billy Sparks inside his soul But as long as we believe there's always hope More than seven Sundays in a row 
Well, seven Sundays in a row he's been in church And he's a little hard to recognize And his tie and starch white shirt And there's a battle raging in his troubled soul But God's won seven Sundays in a row Yes, there's a battle raging in his troubled soul God's won seven Sundays in a row. Well, I hope you enjoyed that little tune here on the Carolina Rose guitar. We're going to be packing it up shortly and sending it back to its rightful odor. And then, as in all shop talks, I try to give at least a, at least a little bit of a tip or a trick or suggestion or education something and so today we're going to do that on the truss rod you know there are probably more misunderstandings and more myths and more problems created by the truss rod than anything on the guitar i mean this is probably in my opinion at least at least several years ago, and, and part of it has been the fact that I keep preaching on this on my videos, and so some of you have heard this a few times already, and uh, it may sound like a broken record to some of you. But people don't know how to use truss rods. That's just the bottom line. And uh, th there's lots of myths about adjust your truss rod to make your action better. It doesn't change your action. It, yes, it can affect your action. In other words, it can cause a little change in your action here or there, but that's not the intended purpose of a truss rod. A truss rod, literally, as you can see, is encased in this neck. Now, first of all, your body comes on here, right? So tightening or changing that isn't going to change this angle at all. It isn't going to change one thing on that. You can tighten this, loosen this, any way you want to, and the way it's attached here isn't going to change at all. So that's not going to change the height of your strings to your body. Not one bit. The only thing a truss rod does, and I'm exaggerating here, but you could figure this would be a high point and this could kind of be a high point. The truss rod comes in at an angle like this. I mean, or at underbow like this. And I'm exaggerating, obviously. It's a very, very small underbow. But the truss rod is put in there as an underbow, and this filler strip is cut to fit that fi underbow, and underneath it I fill in also to, to fill that underbow. So in other words, it's in a, a U-shaped channel. When you tighten that, all it does is flatten this area right here. In other words, over time, strings pull up on the neck and it will cause this to underbow right here. When you tighten that, that pulls that underbow back out. It straightens out that stick and pulls the middle up. That's all a truss rod does. That's it, that's all it does. It doesn't do anything else. If you think it does something else, you're just wrong. I can't force you to be correct. <laughs> no, that's the truth, it really is. I mean, that's all it's for. And that's why I say it can affect your action but it doesn't really adjust your action. You adjust your action by the nut and you adjust your action by the saddle. The, the, uh, the relief can be affected more by your truss rod, yes. And so you can adjust your relief by the truss rod, but it won't change the string height here and it won't change the string height here. It just doesn't do that. In extreme, extreme, extreme cases where you've really let the truss rod go for a very long time and the neck is really pulled up, sometimes it will do a lot more on those extreme cases. But on your average well-kept instrument, that's all it does is it just takes the underbow out of the middle, it just adjusts the relief in the um, string there. And if you don't know what relief is, if you put a uh, capo at your first fret and maybe, a, and maybe another capo at your 12th fret or at least hold the strings down, you measure the, um, the, the height of your string above the middle frets here. And you should have, you know, 10 thousandths of an inch clearance at the most. Me personally, 
I'm good if it's flat. I, I don't feel you need much relief at all. But uh, I wouldn't go much beyond 10 thousandths. Some people go to 12, and that's probably okay, but I certainly wouldn't go above 12. Flat, in my opinion, is better than too much relief. So anyway, that's my opinion, but everybody's got an opinion. So that's what I know about truss rods, and that's your shop tip for today. And by the way, that's not just my opinion on your truss rod. You can go to Gibson or Martin Literature and see the exact same information. They'll tell you the same thing. It's not there to adjust your action. Hope that helps you. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day. Thank you.